Somebody said yes. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Lord, you've been so good. Lord, you've been faithful. Lord, whenever we needed you, and even when we didn't know we needed you, you've always been there. Lord, your mercies are new every morning in spite of us. And Lord, you keep on blessing us. Lord, we just say yes. Now, Lord. Now, Lord. I pray and ask in the mighty name of Jesus. That, Lord, thou would hide me so far behind your cross. That, Lord, we, your people, share your voice. Lord, we shall feel your presence and experience your power. So right now, in the blessed name of Jesus, allow some of your preaching power to fall afresh on me. Speak right now, Lord. Speak to us. In this world of uncertainty, of chaos and confusion, Lord, we need a word of truth, a word of strength. Speak now, Lord. And Lord, we give you the credit. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We say amen and amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. For this choir. For the musicians. I believe everything that has breath just ought to praise the Lord. Everything that has breath ought to praise the Lord. Our God is a good God, and he's worthy to be praised. My brothers and sisters, would you stand with me as we share in our scripture reading today? Thank you. Great is his faithfulness. Our scripture reading today is coming from the book of Genesis, the first chapter, verses 24 through 31. Reading it from the New Living Translation. Verse 24 says this. It says, Then... Then God said, let the earth produce every sort of animal, each producing offspring of the same kind, livestock, small animals and that scurry along the ground, and wild animals. And that is what happened. God made all sorts of wild animals, livestock, small animals, each able to produce offspring of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Then, then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish of the sea, the, the birds in the sky, the livestock, and all the wild animals on the earth. And the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God, God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Rain over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Then God said, look, I have given you every seed-bearing plant throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food. And I have given every green plant as food for all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, and the small animals that scurry along the ground, everything that has life. And that is what happened. Then God looked over all he had made. He saw that it was very good. And evening passed and morning came, marking the sixth day. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God 
shall last forever. You may be seated. You may be seated. My brothers and sisters, I want to close out the series today about God's image in us, God's identity in us, God's identity in us. God's identity is found in his created. Come on, help me somebody. God's identity is found in us. Today, today, the last sermon in this series, yeah, uh, we want to talk about made in his image. You remember the last one, the second sermon in this series that series was that God knows you. We want to share today that uh, we were made in his image. Brother Stephen, I look at the call to worship, and I don't know how much you all really pay attention to these call to worship and our scripture readings and the sermons and their context and how God puts them together, but our call to, re our call to worship came from the book of Revelations, the last book, the book of endings or new beginnings. Then we looked at Genesis as our scripture reading, the book of beginnings. But Revelations 21, 3 and 8, you heard it in your call to worship. Uh, 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 and it was John, right? And John said, I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, look. If you remember, just a minute ago, we talked in Genesis. God also said, look. He said, look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eye and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. I've got a couple more verses I want to share with you here. Verse 5 follows that and verse 5 says, and, and, the one sitting on the throne said, look, look. Now remember, we talked about Genesis, now we're in Revelation. The one sitting on the throne said, look, I am making everything new. And then he said to me, write this down for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. And he also said, it is finished. He said, it's finished. I am Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. All who are victorious will inherit all these blessings. And I will be their God, and they will be my children. But, but, verse 8 says, but, cowards, unbelievers, the corrupt, murderers, the immoral, those who practice witchcraft, idol worshipers, and all liars, so the other reason he put this in here, I wish I would really read your Bible a little closely. He said, and all liars, their fate is in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. The second death. I wish I really had time today to really talk about, you know, the difference between the first and second death. See, the, the first death is when you actually uh, realize who you are a sinner on your way to hell and decided to take his hand and call him your savior and your redeemer. When you were put in the water and baptized, come on, help me somebody in the room. But he said, this is the second death. The one sitting on the throne said, this is the second death. He also said earlier, Brother Rolf, he said, he said it is finished. 
Now, see, I remember, I remember, I read my Bible, I remember that, 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 that he said it one other time when he was hanging on the cross. And come on, help me, somebody in the room. When, when he had been beaten, battered, and scourged, and when he had been nailed to the cross, and he hung there from the sixth to the ninth hour, he said, it is finished. That was the first phase. Now, in Revelations, he's talking about the second phase. This thing that we're going through now, this, this trouble and struggle that they just sang about that we're going through. He said, you know what? It's finished. Be no more sorrow then, no more death, no more dying then. But I heard him. I heard him when he said it was finished in the first phase and it was completed and, and, and made things right between the created and the creator. How many know you've been made right with God? That you were out of place with God, but Jesus in his first coming has made it right with God. When he took the penalty of your sin on his back, when he died on that cross and the Father raised him from the dead on the third day and he declared all power in heaven and earth is in my hands. Can I talk to you just for a moment about this one called Jesus? I just want to talk about Jesus just for a minute. I promise y'all, we're going to get out on time. Y'all give me two good amens, and I'm almost there. I can feel my help coming. Can I talk about Jesus just for a moment? Also, also I found this here, and it really struck me. It said, behold the man, the man, the man called Jesus. He was born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant woman. He grew up in another village where he worked in a carpenter shop until he was 30. Then for three years, he was an itinerant preacher. He never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never had a family or owned a home. He didn't go to college. He never visited a big city. He never traveled 200 miles from the place where he was born. He did none of the things that usually accompany greatness. He, he had no credentials by but himself. He was only 33 years old when the tide of the public opinion turned against him. His friends ran away from him. One even denied him. He, they turned him over to his enemies and, and, and went through a mockery of a trial. He was nailed to a cross between two, three, between two thieves while he was dying. Uh, his executioners gambled for his garments. The only property he had on earth. When he was dead, he was laid in a bar of grave through the pity of a friend. Nineteen centuries have gone and come and today he is the central figure of all human race. All armies that have ever marched. All the navies that have ever sailed. All the parliaments that have ever sailed. All the kings that have ever reigned put together have not affected the life of a man on this earth as much as this one solitary life. Can I get a witness in the house today? There has been nobody in history that has affected this world like Jesus Christ. He is the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. Nobody is like him. I wish I had a real witness in the house today. My brothers and sisters, I come by, I come by, I promise y'all, I'm almost done. That you were made in his image. You were made in the image of our creator. You were made in his image. When we look at our text, this day six, when God had made everything else, you know, you, I hope you read your Bible. When he said, let there be, and it became... But when he got to this, after he had made all of the animals, when he got to the sixth day, when, when he got to the end of this creation, he said, let us make man in our image. Man was the last that was created. They didn't, look, 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 we didn't involve, we wouldn't come from a big bang theory. He created us. He put his hands on us. He reached down in the dirt and formed us. Look at your, look at your program, the picture on the front. He made you from dirt and he breathed the breath of life into you. That's how much he loves you. 
Look, when he made human life, he created it. And you are the very essence of God, the, the image of God. God's image is imprinted in you, is on you, and is all over you. And you are somebody. Come on, help me in the house today. Yes, we may have been made from dirt. And when it's over, we're going back to dirt. But right now, I am a child of the Most High God. I am a chosen people. I am a royal priesthood. I wish y'all would really pray with me here today. See, being in God's image means that we share, all of us share Though imperfectly and finitely, the nature of God. Let me put a pen right here, Sister DeShazer, because I don't want nobody to get misunderstood. You are made in his image, but you are not God. Come on, help me today. Help me right now, somebody. You are made in his image, but you are not God. When we talk about the image of God, we're talking about the attributes of God, the character of God, the personality of God, the truth of God, the wisdom of God, the love of God, the holiness of God, the justice of God, the faithfulness of God. Come on, somebody. That's who you are made. That's what dwells inside of you. When it says you're made in his image, that means the attributes and the characteristics of a God, he put them in you. See, that's why, that's why, that's why, Brother Donnell, I, I, I struggle sometimes with people because uh, uh, I wonder why they show mean and hateful, conniving, sneaky, always trying to get over. When you're made in the image of God. Don't you know God owns everything, has everything, and if you are made in the image of God, that means you have everything? Look at your Bible. What did it say? Everything that he made, he made you ruler over it. Can I get a witness here? God's purpose in creating us is that we may have fellowship with him. And that we may share his characteristics with all mankind. Because there's somebody that's in your neighborhood. There's somebody that's in your world that needs to see God. Somebody that you know. Somebody that you come in contact with every day. They are wondering, is God real? And guess what? The reality is God is standing right there by them and they can't see him. I wonder why. Come on, it's time out for closet Christians. Come on, help me somebody. It's time to be who God made you to be. We are to rule. We have dominion over this world. Look, 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 look. The world can't give you nothing. The world can't take nothing from you. You have power over the world. In other words, you know that one y'all always giving credit to? Satan can't make you do nothing. Devil can't make you do nothing. Whatever you do, you do by your own free will. God was, God, God said, I want y'all, my, my, my created being. My very image. I want y'all to be my representatives. To be my ambassadors. Into a dark and dying world. Into a sick and struggling world. I want y'all to, I want y'all to go into places that make you feel uncomfortable. I want you to talk to people that act like they don't want to hear you. I want you to go around and do some things you think you ain't qualified to do. Because if I be with you, if I be for you, come on, help me somebody. If I be for you, I'm more than the whole world against you. Hmm. We are his representatives. Please be careful. Don't fall into the trap like the Egyptian kings who built up gods and they were idol worshipers and they made a god for this and a god for that. Don't let your car, your job, your money, your position, your title become your god. Come on, help me in the house today. There's only one god. 
And besides him, there is none other. But see, you know what? You know what, Steve? I, you know, this thing called sin that some of us claim we don't do. Some of us claim we are without. Hmm. Because of sin, Jesus has said all things have been made. When he said it was finished, sin has no more dominion over you. Your dominion still reigns. You have, your dominion still carries. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, you know what, just what I'm going to do. Because I know in this world you're going to have trouble, and, 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 but I want you to be of good cheer because one day I'm coming back and I'm going to fix all this stuff. Uh, uh, that's in my second come. As a matter of fact, let me get a little proof here from Hebrews chapter 2, verse 5 through 9. I hope you all writing these things down so you can go back and follow me up because I don't want you to take my word for it. But Hebrews 2, 5 and 9, Jesus said, Jesus said, look, 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 look. Uh, the, the writer quoted him, he said, and furthermore, it is not angels who will control the future world we are talking about. For in one place, the scriptures say, what are mere mortals that you should think about them? It, look, it may be more familiar with you when he said, what is man that you are mindful of them? But it goes on and said, or oh, the son of man that you should care for him. Yet for a little while, you made them little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them authority over all things. Now, when it says all things, it means nothing is left out. But we have not yet seen all things put under their authority. What we do see is Jesus for a little while was given a position a little lower than the angels and because he suffered death for us, he is now crowned with glory and honor. Yes, by God's grace, Jesus tasted death for every last one of you. For everyone. See, 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 Minister Anderson, that's why we shouldn't be scared to die if you got your business fixed. Come on, help me somebody. If you know that you know that you sure enough know that you're under the covering and the blood of Jesus Christ, dying does not fear us because when this body, when this mortal puts on immortality, when this corruptible puts on income, come on, help me somebody. Look, 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 I know, I know, look, I'm not trying to be morbid, I know we love living in this world, we love day by day, but look, there's something better on the other side. Can I get a witness here? They said, if you read in your Bible, if you read over there in Revelation, there'll be no more sickness, no more dying, no more crying. He's going to wipe away every tear from your eye. No more pain, no more suffering. But in the meantime, you are made in the image of God. God said, look, I'm going to make them male and female, that they will be fruitful and increase in number. Now, I prayed about this. I said, Lord, are you sure? He said, yeah, we got to make it plain because there's a whole lot of misinformation uh, going on out there. When he made the animals, he made them that they may produce the offspring of their own kind. Can I get a witness here? He made male and female, and he told them to be fruitful and multiply. In other words, a man can't be fruitful with another man and multiply. Can I be playing in the room today? And look, 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 look. If animals got enough sense, you don't see a lion mating with a bear. Can I get a witness here? Have you? You don't see monkeys mating with horses. Ma I knew this was going to be hard territory, but I got to be obedient. He said, I made, I made every living thing to multiply, to bring forth their own offspring. That's why God's order is set and it is solid. Ain't no altar. God didn't make no mistake. He said, I made them male and female. And when I made them, I said it was good. So anybody that said 
No, he intended on me being a woman. No, he did not. He made you a man. No, he didn't intend on you being a man. He made you to be a woman. No, it ain't for... Oh, y'all ain't gonna pray with me today. Now, I don't know the God that you serve, but my God is omnipotent. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He knows everything and is everywhere at the same. He does not. Y'all heard the song. He never fails. That's my answer to the whole homosexual uh, 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 issue right there. That's my my Bible tells me God said I made them male and female. He didn't make no mistake. Y'all remember what we talked about last week? God knows you. He knitted you together in your mother's womb. Don't you know that he put the parts on you when he knitted you in your mother's womb? He didn't make no mistake. He knew you before you was a zygo. He knew you before you was anything. God did not make a mistake. Before your mother knew you, I knew you. I needed you together in your mother's womb. Now y'all can take that and tell that to anybody. I stand on it, I ain't scared of nobody. I tell them what I tell them. God said I made a male and female. Let me move on. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. We were made in his image, in the likeness of Christ. We carry the characteristics of God, the attributes of God, the attitudes of God. That's why it ought to make us mad when somebody come against the word of God and take the word of God and twist it around to make it fit their own agenda. That's why we ought to stand up against those that try to say that no, God didn't say that. Everything that God said is right here and we believe in every word of it. Jesus, the likeness of Christ. Jesus said it like this. Jesus said, look, look, look. Don't get twisted up in the world. Don't get caught up in all that mess that they're doing. Because in Matthew 11, verses 27 through 29, New Living Translation, Jesus said, my father has entrusted everything to me. No one truly knows the son except the father, and no one truly knows the father except the son, and those to whom the son chooses to reveal him. Y'all are chosen. He has chosen to reveal himself to you. Verse 28 said, then Jesus said, look, look, I know y'all get tired. I know this world and this work is burdensome and worrisome, but he said, look, in verse 28, come to me. Don't go to nobody else. Don't go to Jack Daniels. Don't go to Hennessy. Don't go to the Legion. Don't go to your sister. He said, come to me. All you who are weary and heavy laden or carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let, let me teach you because I am humble and I am gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your souls. When Jesus had tasted death, John 19 and 30, when Jesus had tasted it, he said, it's finished. When he was hanging on the cross, he said, I'm thirsty. Oh, they gave him sour wine to drink. They tried to steal Take away him. But I heard over there, Scotty and son, they said, you ought to taste and see that the Lord is good. Even when he tasted bitter wine, he said, it is finished. Father, in thy hand, I commit my spirit. He dropped his head and he died. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm glad he died. That's why I mean, we're not scared of death because if Jesus died, and God raised him from the dead. And he said the same thing. That if you suffer with me, you'll also reign with me. If you endure suffering as a good soldier. Come on, help me somebody. If you just hang on in there for just a little while longer. I promise you, I'm coming back. No man knows the day nor the hour, but I'm coming back. I'm coming back for you. The world can't do you no harm, because I got you in the palm of my hand. Every blood-bought, born-again believer 
over. You belong to me. Every one the Father gave me, I still got him. Every one that calls my name, I hear your call, and I pity your groan. Call on my name. You are made in my image. I love you so much that I died. But early on Sunday morning, I got up with all power, all power in my hands. Heaven and earth is in my hands. So let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Hold on to his unchanging hand. You were made in his image. He hasn't forgotten about you. I know it gets hard sometimes. I know they talk about you. They throw at you. Every time you try to make one step forward, they pull you two steps back. But keep on pressing towards the mark of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus. Can I get a witness here? Thank you, Lord. Made in his image. Thank you. Whatever comes my way, whatever they may say, I'm a hold to God's unchanging hand. I'm a thank the Lord for what he's done. I'm a thank the Lord for being my creator and my savior. Last scripture I want to leave with you and I'm done. In 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10, he said, but... You are not like that. For you are a chosen people. You are royal priests and a holy nation. God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Once you had no identity as a people, now you are God's people. Once you receive no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. Made in the image of God. May God forever be with you and keep you. Don't let nobody talk down to you. Don't let nobody talk about you if they want to. But let them talk. But know that you are made in his image. And in the likeness of Christ. Father, I pray. That, Lord, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart is acceptable in thy sight. For, Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. Lord, you brought me out of darkness. Brought me into your marvelous light. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for your example. Lord, would you continue to be with us as we try to show your love and compassion to this dying world? Help us to be better and stronger. Help us to be your image. Help us to be your example. Help us to be your representatives, your ambassadors of truth. Lord God, we thank you now. We thank you. Prepare us to go into this dark and dying world and tell somebody about the reality of a true and living God. And we ask this. And he that conquered both death and the grave we ask this in Jesus' name, and for his sake we said amen and amen. God bless you, and God keep you. Will you stand with us? Stand with us just for a moment. The doors are open. There may be somebody here today. You may want to come and join this fellowship. You may want to come and ask for prayer. You may want to come and be reinstated. This is your opportunity. You can come. The doors are wide open. He's standing, arms stretched wide, saying, come. Come to me, and I'll be rest. Come while you still have time. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You ought to come. You ought to come. Make up your mind. Tomorrow is not promised to anybody. This may be the last chance you have.
Jesus said, I make all things new. He said, come, come. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There's somebody else in the room. Somebody else in the room. You ought to come. Don't worry about the one on the left or the right. You ought to come. This is a personal decision. God knows you. God knows you. You are made in his image. You are somebody. Tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised to any of us. But hell is real. Jesus will, he will. Still time, there's still time. You ought to come. We thank God. We believe that He has spoken and He has not yet been quiet. He still has some more talking to do. Let the whole church say amen. Let the church Lift your voices, lift your voices, lift your heart, and let the church. And now, Father, we do thank you that, Lord, you took time and created us. You made us in your image. Now, Lord, use us to thy glory as we depart and go our separate ways. Lord, use us right where we are that we may show your love and your compassion to one another. And we say now unto him that is able to present you faultless with exceedingly great joy to him be God be the only wise God, dominion and power, henceforth now and even until forevermore. And let all of the created of God say together, amen, 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 amen. and amen. Let the